Hey everybody, this is Wendy Ponomarenko. I'm the art teacher and librarian at Temple Emanuel. And as part of the ongoing library project, I've been trying to bring our temple resources to our families in this time of need when all the libraries are closed and our library is inaccessible to everybody. So I've been recording a book a night. And today's book is Menorah Under the Sea by Esther Susan Heller. Hope you enjoy. This is Menorah Under the Sea by Esther Susan Heller. David Ginsburg boarded an airplane in Los Angeles and flew for 14 hours. He flew past all the lands where it was winter and all the countries where it was summer. When the plane finally landed in Christchurch, New Zealand, he switched to a U.S. Air Force cargo plane that took him to McMurdo Station in Antarctica, down at the bottom of the world. Antarctica is a dangerous place, where only trained researchers live for a few months at a time. Cruise ships with adventurous tourists occasionally drop anchor at one of the islands. David David is a marine biologist. He would live at McMurdo for five months to study the underwater animals that live in the frigid ocean. It was the first night of Hanukkah when David got ready to dive. Could Hanukkah come to Antarctica, he wondered? It was summer, but so cold that the ice on the ground hadn't melted. During summer, there's no night. How can you light a menorah when the sun's still shining? He pulled on his dry suit, a red rubber outfit that stretched from his toes to his neck. It felt like he was stepping into a garbage bag, but it kept him warm and dry in the freezing water. His diving buddy, Rob, zipped the suit closed, and David did the same for Rob. They put on their dry, clo their dry gloves, hoods, and face masks. They strapped air tanks on their backs and adjusted their breathing devices. With battery-operated flashlights and underwater cameras, they were ready to go. David and Rob left the warm diving hut and tramped through the tunnel dug into the ice until they reached the dark, freezing water. Because the dry suits float like balloons, they needed to add on 46-pound weights so that they would sink to the bottom. David swam in spirals, the weights pulling him down lower and lower. The sea was dark, the surface covered by thick blocks of ice as tall as four people standing on one another's shoulders. The only light came from the diving hole and from the spots that David and Rob illuminated with their flashlights. David shined his light toward a group of sea urchins. They were green, red, yellow, and pink. He saw sea cucumbers that looked like stalks of broccoli and pencil urchins with thick, blunt spines. The starfish looked like cookie cutters. Their sharp, spindly spines poked his gloves when he touched them. David had come to Antarctica to study the sea urchins who live in water colder than anywhere else on Earth. They crawl on rocks and ocean shelves, over underwater mountains and on the floor of the sea. How do they survive in this freezing water? What is their secret? The urchins inched slowly and soundlessly along the rocks on their little tube feet, stopping occasionally to nibble some seaweed. It was so quiet that David could hear himself blowing bubbles. As he circled lower and lower, he began to think about home. Back in Los Angeles, everyone would be putting candles in their, in their Hanukkah menorahs. His family and friends would be getting together to celebrate. David had packed his metal traveling menorah and a box of colorful Hanukkah candles, but it didn't feel like Hanukkah in Antarctica. David turned his attention back to the sea urchins. He opened his collection bag and watched the starfish swim into it. Suddenly, underneath his face mask, he began to smile. He had an amazing idea, but he would have to hurry because it was almost time to go back up. 
He couldn't risk running out of oxygen. David circled deeper until he reached a flat shelf. He opened his collection bag and let a few of the sea urchins spill out. He gently placed them in stacks, carefully avoiding their spines. He made eight pillars, one for each night of Hanukkah, one for each night that the little flask of oil in the temple had burned. Then he made a ninth one, the shamash, the helper candle, taller than the others. At the very top, he added sea stars. Nobody move, he told the sea urchins, and as he took their picture, except for the shamash, which kept sinking, they were very cooperative. Later, they would slowly drift away. Rob signaled with his flashlight that it was time to go back up. David closed his collection bag and began letting air into his dry suit. He started to rise. He let in more and more air until he had gone all 80 feet back up to the surface. David and Rob climbed out of the diving hole. In the warming hut, they unzipped each other's suits at the shoulders. They took off their suits and drank some hot cocoa. Back at McMurdo, David downloaded his photos into his laptop computer. Others came over to see. Awesome, said Emily, one of the other scientists. Is it really Hanukkah tonight? Howie asked. I wish we had a menorah, sighed Anna. I have one. I brought it from home, David said. That night, as the sun shone brightly in the southern sky, everybody watched as David set up his menorah and took out two candles. He lit the shamash and then the first candle. The Jewish scientists joined him in singing the blessings. They talked about celebrations they were missing at home and took turns telling the story of how long ago the Jewish people stood up to their enemies. Against all odds, they had survived. David didn't know exactly how the sea urchins managed to stay alive in the dark freezing water. He would keep studying them to learn their secrets. But he knew how the Jewish people survived by not forgetting to light the menorah and by knowing that Hanukkah was celebrated everywhere, even in Antarctica. The end. I've been wanting to read this one for a while, but since it was a Hanukkah book, I kept putting it off thinking, oh, I'll do it sometime closer to the holiday. I've got so much time. But honestly, we've got so few like kids science books. Um, we've got biographies of famous scientists, but not too many actual like science oriented books in our in our wonderful Jewish library. So so finally my own love got to me and I just indulged. So this menorah under the sea um, is is uh, about a researcher who of course is researching in Antarctica. He's actually a, a professor over at UCLA and uh, he studies sea urchins and sea stars and uh, biology and ecology in um, um, hard to live in harsh environments. And in Antarctica, the area that he was studying right there near McMurdo Station, uh, McMurdo Station is, um, is hosted by 40 different countries who, uh, it's a scientific station in Antarctica. You can only, you can only go there if you have permission and you like work it out way beforehand. You have a lot of paperwork and grants and things like that you have to, you have to put in beforehand. But uh, for those that work there, there's very strict guidelines that they have to treat the environment very well and that they're not supposed to really interact with the animals. They're supposed to observe them and just, you know, do their best to, to you know, be scientists. Uh, and in his case, of course, he did move the animals around, but he actually did have a collection bag that he was taking some of them in. So, uh, so that was part of his research anyway, although the taking the picture was, was a bit of an indulgence. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, uh, so sea urchins are fascinating. They're invertebrates. They, um, generally will eat whatever they can fit in their, in all their little, their little mouths. Um, and, uh, and it's just, it's just wonderful to get to have, uh, a book that, that is Jewish and yet scientific and actually shows these amazing photographs of diving underwater in Antarctica.
Who would love to go diving in Antarctica? I'd love to go diving in Antarctica. Who else? We should all do this. So, uh, <laughs> so you can see this in our Hanukkah section. It's a wonderful book. You should check it out. Enjoy.